Yes, sir. Go right ahead. I'll get started. Uh, um, proud of the guys on senior day. Uh, we accomplished what we wanted to, and, and that's to send them out with a win. Uh, and also got uh, accomplished for the third straight bowl game in a row. I, I was just told it's the first time we've been to three straight bowls since 2016. So uh, quite the accomplishment for these seniors who uh, the previous years before we came in didn't get to go to a bowl game. And, and that's your goal. So uh, proud of the seniors, proud of the accomplishment. Um, this morning they, the, they told me that Sam was not going to play. I was trying to figure out, do you put him in a play? Do you put him in a series? Um, which would, would not have been smart if somebody had, had hit him because he, he feels like he'll be well and ready to go on Friday. Uh, but it, it also put us in a position where uh, it was Jacoby Criswell's day and, and Drake May's day, and, um, and we were able to play them for a whole game um, with the two halves. And, and it uh, really helps us moving forward. We saw some really, really good things out of them. Uh, I was also proud of British Books. Uh, him coming in and gaining 80-plus yards in, in his senior day. Uh, and he's the, the ultimate story of success. He comes in as a walk-on. He's, uh, he, he's a graduate. Uh, he's a, a guy who competed to get on some special teams. And, and then he he's becomes a special team captain. And then he, becomes, he, he, he gets a scholarship. And, and then today, uh, like he did a couple of times last year, he really looked good running the ball. So... Uh, very, very proud of him. We got to play a whole lot of players. Uh, that's what you want on a day like today. Uh, Wofford's a tough team to play offensively for our defense because they're on the option. And you don't want to spend a lot of time working on the option during the week as you're getting ready to play State uh, because State's not an option team. So Wofford came in to try to keep the ball and keep it away from us and make three yards here and five yards there. And, and, the, and they did a good job with it. So. Uh, but, but really proud of the two young quarterbacks in our offense. They, they ran up and down the field and, and did a lot of great things. We were able to play a lot of backup uh, offensive linemen. I, I was disappointed that we didn't get the ball in on the fourth and one. Uh, we've got to continue to get better in, in that area. So we did make the fourth and one at the 30. I ran that because we're working on getting better at that area. And then we get down to the goal line and don't get it in. So, uh, but overall, a, a great win. Excited about the, the bowl game. Uh, moving forward, um, we'll, we'll grade this one, get with our players tomorrow, short week again next week, and we will um, practice on Monday, which will be like our Tuesday practice, uh, similar to what we had at Pittsburgh. Uh, we won't have a, a day off this week till Saturday, uh, but the guys will come in tomorrow, uh, celebrate this win, celebrate going to another bowl game, and start getting ready for state. Questions, Mark? Great. Thanks, Coach. We'll uh, begin with Brandon P. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Coach. Congratulations on the win. I know you haven't had time to look at the film, but uh, did you see anything out there that separated the quarterback battle today? Brandon, I, I didn't. Uh, I thought they both looked really, really good. Um, I, I didn't know whether it was harder to start Jacoby or whether if you're Drake, you had to sit and watch for a half and come in the second half. And then I thought about changing them by the series, and I thought, ah, that's not fair. They really won't be able to get into a rhythm. And then I even thought about putting Drake in for the, the one-minute drill right before the half and thought, you know, he hadn't played any. That's not fair. Uh, so we, we, Drake didn't have the same offensive line as, as Jacoby did. We were starting to substitute a lot in the second half. Uh, but I thought both guys did a good job. Coach Longo and I will look at that tomorrow, um, hopefully. Uh, we won't need them to play in a critical role the next two 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 games uh, now that we're guaranteed a bowl game. But um, this will be great experience for those guys going into next year. And when we open up with Florida and M, this this uh, they at least know how it's going to feel to be out there. It, you look at our league this year. You got some outliers on top who have been pretty good. You got some that have struggled at the bottom. Most of the teams are right in the middle. So it's been like the NFL. You don't have a lot of time to play different players. And, and, and you'd like to get your program to grow more by playing more guys. And, and today was the day we got to do that. Noah Monroe, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Noah Monroe from the Daily Tar Heel. Congrats on the win. I mean, like Thanks you said, you've got, got two talented quarterbacks uh, in Jacoby and Drake. So what makes them both so special in their own regards? And, I mean, how did you see that today? Well, Noah, the, we, we've got a perfect setup for a quarterback controversy going forward. Everybody loves that. So that, 
it can't be better than, than that for next year. So this, this will be something we can talk about. We're not going to talk about high uh, rankings or high expectations. I can tell you that. <laughs> that one's gone for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us as low on that rating scale as we can get. Uh, but but uh, they're both accurate. They both can run. Uh, Jacoby's been here two years in January. He didn't get to go through the first spring because we didn't have one because of COVID. And then Drake just came in in, in January a year ago. So uh, that was a, a great start today to look at both guys. We'll evaluate them today. A lot of times you're not sure what they checked to and what they didn't and how they managed the, the, the offense while they were on the field. Uh, but I really felt good about both of them and, and think that uh, uh, we've got some special quarterbacks uh, moving forward. That room's really strong and we've, we've got another one committed coming in. So uh, I, I feel really, really good about that room and, and Noah, that room's the most important one we've got. They touch the ball every time and, and you're only as good as as your, your quarterbacks. And I told these two guys this morning that Sam opened up with South Carolina on the road. So you're playing Wofford at home, so don't come in here and tell me you're nervous. Just go play and have some fun. And I, I was proud that uh, both guys played well. Drake runs much better than people give him credit for. He's 6'5", he's, he's probably 215, 220, uh, but he can really run fast. And I think we saw that some out there today. Michael Co. Hey, Coach, so Antoine Green wasn't in the senior day uh, festivities. Is he going to try to come back for next season? Yeah, Michael, you said Antoine Green? That's right. Yeah, Antoine. Yes, as, as, like we said, who knows? But uh, as of right now, Antoine has told us he's 100% coming back. And with on Kyla McMichael's interception, it looked like Jeremiah um, was kind of going to be coming off the field. Are there any updates on him? Yeah, well, I think he's fine. I, I held him out after that because we were going to win the game anyway, and I didn't want him to go back out there. But uh, um, I, I think he's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Austin Bean, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Austin Bean with the Daily Star Hill. Um, I know you spoke about British a little bit, but, um, you know, both of the backs, um, you know, Todd Chandler and Brooks in particular, really seem to be, you know, running with physicality today and, you know, really fighting for extra yards. Um, I was just kind of wondering, you know, what you like that you saw of them and just kind of what their seniority has meant to this team over the season. Yes, Austin, it, it's, a, it's a great point. We had 305 yards rushing. I think we had one sack, and that was because uh, Drake held the ball too long. He should have thrown it away. And we've got to do a better job of that with our quarterbacks moving forward. Uh, but I thought the offensive line did a good job. Uh, but backs have to make yards after contact. That, that's where uh, you evaluate their worth. And both of those guys today made a lot of yards after contact, and I was really, really proud of them. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Isaiah Lucas, go ahead. Hey, Coach, just wanted to know if you saw everything that you were expecting to see coming in out of the two quarterbacks. I, I did, Isaiah. I'm, I'm really, really proud of them. They uh, um, Last year, we, we got to play Jacoby a little bit against Western Carolina, and I didn't think he played really well. And then he came in and hit a great pass against Georgia State late, and I thought he looked more comfortable. But today, I thought he looked comfortable. Um, he, they protected him well. We were able to run the ball well. Um, and, and then I didn't know how Drake would feel sitting there the, the entire time. We tell him at halftime you're going in. That's got to be a little anxious for a true freshman. The first time he walks out on the field and uh, he took us the length of the field and scored immediately and, and uh, made a couple of throws. The, the throw he made to uh, uh, Justin Olson on the boundary was uh, uh, all the way across the field, quick release uh, like a dart. And, and then he laid the ball up deep to uh, J.J. Jones in the end zone. J.J. dropped it, but came back and, and, and caught a great deep ball on the other end. So uh, I thought both of them, I think both of them walking out of here today have to feel really good about their performance uh, and the future of, of uh, uh, the quarterback position on offense moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Isaiah. All right, last one for Coach Brown will come from Gregory Hall. Hey, Mac. Is there any update on um, Curious Conley? Obviously, that hit on the kickoff didn't didn't look great when he was coming off the field. 
Yeah, there's not, Gregory. I asked them not to tell me during the game. The only reason I knew about Jeremiah is they said, he can go back in. Do you want him to go back in? And I said, no. Do not let him go back in. So uh, Jeremy will get you a, an update on, on Jaquarius and anybody else that might have gotten hurt during the game. But um, I never, uh, I just asked them, can they go back in or not? Uh, and I, I had a, a young man here, Octavius Barnes, uh, uh, ruined his knee uh, in the CarQuest Bowl. Um, and it was on TV, and his mother saw it. And, and a sideline reporter said, he's ruined his knee, he's out for the year, and mom was crying and screaming she was away. So at that time, Gregory, I asked our, our doctors, don't ever tell me uh, or our position coaches uh, in front of a player on the sideline. Uh, in fact, wait till you get the players back in and you've got them in a, a place where you can call their parents and talk to them. I don't want a guy that, that might be hurt bad uh, crying and, and being embarrassed and, and, and being put in a very uncomfortable position in front of his players, and especially until his parents are there. So uh, that happened many years ago, and I, I just said, guys, let's, let's go back in. Uh, tell me afterwards. Um, uh, uh, DJ Jones got banged up a little bit. And I saw his parents afterwards, and I said, is he okay? And they said, we're going to see him right now. I think he's fine. So that's just the, the process that we go through because I, I know after 33 years that's best for the young person, it's best for the parents, and it's best for our team uh, not to discuss an injury in front of them on the sideline during a game. And I know you said it was hard to prepare for Wofford's option because State's not an option team, but State's obviously a successful team running the football. Um, Wofford nearly five yards of carry today. Just how do you think that prepared your defense moving forward? And what did you like or not like out of, the defense, out of your defense as far as stopping the run? Yeah, I, I like the fact that they had a turnover that led to points. Uh, but I, I knew what Wofford was going to do. Western Carolina came in last year and they said, we're going to run it every time. And, and we're, we're going to try to make every fourth down and one or fourth down and three. And, and um, I, I knew that was coming in today. And uh, our guys will be more excited about competing against State than they were Wofford. So we'll be fine. All right, Coach, thanks for a few minutes. We appreciate it. Thank you. And, Gregory, I'd rather them uh, have shut them out. I'd rather them uh, had no yards rushing at all. Uh, but with an option team, that's probably not going to happen. And they got 44 points last week. You know, it's, it's funny how football is. This team uh, lost to Samford 27-24, like I said, and Samford got beat by Florida 70-52. Uh, to 52. So you, you can't ever take this crazy game for granted. And Florida goes for a two-point play to tie Alabama. So how do you ever make any sense out of this thing? I think it starts with a ball and sits its oblong. I think it's the craziest sport out there because it bounces crazy. And these games are crazy. And this year seems to have out crazied every other year for me. So it is kick it off and grab and hold on. When somebody says, how do you feel about the game? I have gone to myself and said, I have no clue. I'm around them every day. And I have no clue what's going to happen. So just grab and hang out. So when you get in and it's a W, you get happy. Uh, you're going to a bowl game. You're excited. Um, and and you get ready to, to play your rival the next week. So but we're, we're in a really good spot leaving today. Great. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. See you all on Monday.